there's always been plenty of reason to buy a car in the BMW X range. You buy an X3 or an X5 because you want something spacious, practical. You buy an X6 because you want to stick two fingers up at everyone. And you buy an X1 because, well actually there's never been a reason to buy an X1. Until now. This is the second generation X1. For this model, BMW's addressed some of the problems with the original and made a car that is not only incredibly desirable, but maybe, just maybe, makes the other models in the X range look a little bit pointless. Let's start with the looks. When I looked at the old X1, I could never quite decide what it was supposed to be. Was it a hatchback on stilts, an SUV that had shrunk in the wash? Nobody quite knew, and nor do I suspect did BMW. But when you look at this new car, you can tell straight away it's an X model and a damn good looking one at that. The old X1 looked a little bit like a clown shoe on wheels, proportions all over the place. But this takes its inspiration from its big brothers. Everything is on point, including the big upright BMW kidney grille and the three distinct vents at the front. It's attractive in profile too, with a couple of creases running the length of the car, giving it a more sculpted look. Its best angle is from the back, where it has a broad, strong, sporty stance. Practicality is really important in an X car, and I've got to say I'm really impressed by this thing. It comes with a really handy kick to open feature on the boot, which is great if you've got your hands full of shopping. Plus the boot itself is massive, 505 liters. That's 85 liters bigger than the previous car. Plus the load floor, completely flat. That makes it easy to load large objects. And if you want even more space, you just lift the boot floor and it reveals a hidden compartment underneath. And that's big enough for a couple of medium sized cases. If you want even more room, well, the rear seats are actually really easy to fold. They come with a 40, 20, 40 split. So you can carry a rear passenger on one side and a flat pack wardrobe on the other if you want to. Plus check out this folding mechanism. Nice and easy, all electrically done, no sweat whatsoever. Once you're inside, the new X1 has loads of legroom, 33 millimeters more than the old car if you get the standard seats or up to 66 millimeters more if you go for the optional sliding seats. These allow you to either maximize boot space or maximize your legroom. Plus, headroom in this thing is very generous. Up front, there is a lot of space in this thing. It's 53 millimeters taller and 23 millimeters wider. So there's more headroom and more shoulder room generally. The car's actually shorter than before, although they have spaced the wheels out front to back, so you get a lot more room in the cabin. I reckon if you were to blindfold someone and ask them to guess what kind of car they were in, they'd probably guess they were in an X3, maybe even an X5. A lot of that is down to the quality. This has pretty much the same interior as the larger BMW cars. You get lots of horizontal layers made of different materials, soft touch plastic, chrome, wood, leather, and all of that gives you the impression they've put a lot of thought and energy into putting this thing together. As for space, well, the door bins are big, big enough for a litre bottle of water. The cup holders are spacious enough for a couple of large coffee cups. The glove box is a decent size and the central storage compartment is decent. Plus, on top of all that, you get some added storage underneath the seats. So, how does the X1 fare on the move? Well, it's fair to say that most people who buy this car aren't gonna do anything more strenuous than maybe head to the local supermarket, drop the kids off at school. The closest they're gonna to get to off-roading is mounting a curb outside Marks and Spencer's. But I've got an off-road track here in Spain and I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't put this thing through its paces off the beaten track. So right now I'm just generating some extreme angle. And as you can see, even though I'm leading to the left, the car is coping incredibly well away from a totally flat surface. No problem whatsoever. The suspension, which is actually really comfortable on the road, does a really good job of soaking up the bumps out here on the off-road track. And I haven't even got to floor it to get up steep hills. It just responds incredibly well. There's lots of torque from the engine. When you get over any obstacles, no fuss whatsoever. The previous X1 didn't have an awful lot of ground clearance, but this car rides a little bit higher than before 
So you get lots of clearance underneath. That means you won't scrape up your prize asset as you go over rough terrain. Right now I'm rolling on standard road tires. These aren't off-road tires. And I've got a really steep hill right here. But the thing just grips. And in fact, I've got the traction control in a special mode that allows a little bit of slip to actually get you a little bit more purchase as you scrabble up the hill. And it works really well. One of the coolest things in this car, which most people will never use, is hill descent control. So right now, I'm at the top of a very steep hill and my feet aren't even on the pedals. The automatic braking system, the ABS are just applying and releasing the brakes very rapidly just to get you down in a controlled manner. If you were to use the brakes manually, you have the danger of locking up and sliding and careening out of control. But in the X1, no problem whatsoever. On the road, my first impression of this car is that it's a proper quality product. Everything just has a nice weight to it. It feels like a premium car. It's a really refined car, and part of that is down to the fact that it uses BMW's adaptive suspension system. There are three modes to it, Eco Pro, Comfort, and Sport. And in Comfort mode, it just soaks up all the bumps, no bother whatsoever. Even in Sport mode, it's actually a really forgiving car to drive over rough terrain. The sound deadening is really impressive in this car as well. You can drive this thing at 70 miles an hour on the motorway and not really hear anything in terms of wind noise. It's actually better than the 3 Series, if you ask me, in that respect. Another contributing factor to its refinement level is the fact that it uses BMW's 8-speed transmission system. And that means it shifts between gears really smoothly. You never really find it scrabbling around for the right gear. It never seems to be revving too high or too low. It always seems to be in the right ratio to pull you away smoothly. The new X1 is a bigger car than before. It's also taller, and that means the center of gravity could potentially have been thrown off a little bit. But what they've done is they've widened the track and extended the wheelbase to compensate for that. And that means it handles really well. This isn't a car built for extreme handling, but if the mood takes you and you do decide to drive like a lunatic, then it definitely won't let you down. As for engine performance, the X1 isn't the most exhilarating car to drive in a straight line. The xDrive 25D is quick on paper, 0 to 62 in 6.6, with a top speed of 146, but it really doesn't feel as quick as the numbers suggest. And maybe that's a consequence of that extra refinement. The xDrive 20D, which is likely to be the most popular engine, does 0 to 62 in 7.6 and 137 miles per hour flat out. MPG is a very respectable 58 miles per gallon, and if you try hard, that figure actually feels achievable. I managed nearly 50 at times. On the whole, the new X1 is a huge improvement on the previous car. Massive. And that's saying something, because although the old X1 was sort of the black sheep of the family, it was still half decent. This latest model improves on it in every way possible, with sharper looks, better road manners, better equipment, and it's more capable on and off-road. Ultimately, it's good. So good, it might make you think twice about opting for that X3. Any aspirations of owning a sports car go completely out the window. You end up having to own a hatchback, a crossover, or even worse, an estate. No! no!